Somehow it's got to get in us. And it got in me one day. It just got in me. Norman Schwarzkopf was going to speak to the largest contingency of soldiers ever to be moved. For Desert Storm, the United States military moved the largest number of personnel and equipment in the shortest amount of time in the history of the world. And this seemingly endless number of soldiers are at attention in the desert. And Norman Schwarzkopf, and I've got a bowl of popcorn and that was a mistake, he gets up to speak. And he looks at the men and he says, you soldiers have the best battle strategy ever put together in American history. And you can see their eyes get big. He said, your battle strategy has been created by the finest military minds in the world. Man, I'm sitting there, I put my bowl aside, I stand at attention. He said, the weapons that you have are the most advanced and powerful weapons of any army that has ever marched in the history of the world. I threw that popcorn across the room. How many of you feel something here when I'm talking? Then he said, you have received the most excellent military training that any soldiers have ever received. And then he said, you are the finest fighting army America has ever known. Man, I was ready. I was, I was looking at United Airlines. Somehow, the enemy of our soul, the enemy of our success at the end of this is tied to one single fact. The devil's power to put unbelief. I told you that I believe in faith. I believe in prosperity. I believe in healing. And it took the early pioneers of the faith message a great degree of courage to face the onslaught and they were persecuted. We don't understand what they went through. We don't understand what the early Pentecostals went through. We don't because we're too far detached from the controversy. All of the insidious things that would be said. But of all the things that Brother Hagen was trying to tell us, this is the most astounding feature. You have the best weapons that any army has ever had. I, do you see it? Am I blowing smoke or do you, do you see what I'm saying right here? He would hold up the Bible. This is the greatest military strategy that any army has ever been given. You have the finest weapons, you have the best plan, you have the captain, the Lord Jesus Christ, who only understands one thing, victory, victory, victory. You're not a ragtag, you're not a fool. You're not walking in to that school board meeting as an intruder and an unwanted guest. You're coming in as the power and the word of God. The next time that you pastor stand in your pulpit, there may be some deacons you need to fire. Your church may be deacon possessed. <laughs> there may be some people you need to shut up because you, sir, can no longer esteem yourself, sir or sister. You can no longer esteem yourself a counselor, a therapist, a peacemaker, and, and a, a supervisor or a playground monitor. You're a man of God. You're a woman of God. And you're not to have a congregation that saps the life out of you. It's time for you to get up in front of them and say, you know what? I don't belong to you. I belong to him. And not only do I belong to him, my wife belongs to him. My husband belongs to him. My children belong to him. And I'm going to preach what he tells me. Because in this hour, you don't need a sissy pastor. You need a liar. You need a man. Of
What I'm trying to tell you is that faith became something it wasn't perceived before when the Spirit of God fell on Saul and turned him into another man and turned him into this general and this fighter and the fire of God rose up in him and said, nothing is going to stop me. I'm going to be a threat to everyone who is compromised. I don't like the enemy and I don't like the traitors. I don't like either one. What I like is those who are standing and speaking and opposing. I got to finish. I've gone way too long. Now, and this moment, faith. I once claimed a car. I claimed a wife. I claimed a house. I claimed money. I claimed healing. But now my claims have got to go higher. I've got to claim other things. I've got to claim that devils will be cast out in the name of Jesus. I've got to claim that those who serve Satan are going to be voted out in place of those that are sent by God. I got to have faith. I got to have faith. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Faith. Listen to me. You better get ready to shout right now. We got to have faith that they will never lock down your church ever again. They will not pervert your children. Faith. Faith. Now, Father, you know I did what I could and I said what I could. But now I'm gonna pray over these people. And I'm gonna ask you, God, to let the fire of God. I feel like Elijah on Mount Carmel. How long are you gonna stand in the middle? How long are you gonna be on the fence? How long are you going to halt between two opinions? It's time to burn out Baal in America. We gotta burn him out. We can't just vote him out, we gotta burn him out. And Lord, Elijah stood there. Everybody raise your hands to heaven. Elijah stood there at the time of the evening sacrifice and he said, Lord, let these people know that I have done these things by your hand and your will. And let them know that you are turning their hearts back to you. And the Bible says the fire fell. The fire fell on the altar and they licked up the stones and everyone fell on their face and declared the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Reverence and fear needs to come back to America. Holiness needs to come back to America. With your hands raised, the Holy Spirit told me that at the end of my sermon, he was gonna fall on all the people and he was gonna give them a fresh anointing. And he was going to take those that are the most anointed and give them an even more of an anointing. And he was going to do something where all your fear, all your doubt, all your confusion, all of your lack of courage, all of your hesitancy, everything in you that isn't ready is going to get burned out right now. The prayer that we're about to pray and then we're all going to pray in tongues and then fire is going to fall on this congregation. And let me tell you, it's not going to fall because of Mario's holiness. It's not going to be fall because I've suggested it. It's not going to be to fall on you because I am somebody. I am nothing without Christ. It's going to fall on you because he told me it would. And I believe him. Now, when that fire begins to fall on you, I want you to ignore your neighbor. It doesn't matter. We're all mature here. We all love God here. There's going to be a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire come on you. And that anointing, that fire, that glory, according to Acts chapter 4. Lord, look at the threat and grant unto your servants that with all boldness they may preach your word. While you stretch out your hand to heal and let signs and wonders 
be done in the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Lord, America's in trouble. America's in trouble. Oh God, whatever they had at Azusa Street, we need it. Whatever Finney had, we need it. Whatever they had in the upper room, we need it. Oh God, we need it so bad. We need the Holy Spirit to fall on us and fall on us with such total, complete fervor that we will never be the same. Begin praying in tongues and receive from the fire of Almighty God right now. Louder, even louder. Pray. For your children, for your church, for your nation. Fire, fire of the Holy Spirit. Resendo Boria recabare di Aratoya. I andale de che sindoro corro i arale besede. Corra va sindere di di Aratoya. That's not emotion, that's the power of God. That's not your emotion, that is the power of God. Receive it, receive it. Receive it. Receive him. Can you give the... King of kings, a mighty shout of praise and clap your hands right now. 